Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to an episode of An Anthropologist Watches Beatrice Caruso. Yay! Why are we watching Beatrice Caruso? Because I like her. And because I could use a palate cleanser. Yay! Uh, what am I going to look at her anthropologically with? Um, first off, you should know I like and I like Beatrice. I've been watching her for probably as long as I've been watching Amber, to be perfectly honest. I remember watching Beatrice back when she did the uh, 30 Day Challenges that she would do. And she's kind of sort of doing one right now. She's doing this like no sugar thing. So that's really interesting to me and inspiring to me to give it a shot, you know, for me. But I thought it would be good to watch um, someone who I like and who is also a plus sized person who is attempting a health journey. Beatrice has been kind of on and off with that, but she's been pretty consistent with the whole like trying to get her mental health in order, trying to get her physical health in order, trying to get just her domestic life and her work life in order. So these are things that she has been very consistent about how successful. That's up for debate. Does it really matter? The fact is Beatrice is one of those people that Amber wants to be, where Amber's like, every day, if, as long as you're progressing forward, you're succeeding. Beatrice does progress forward. And so in the long run, she is succeeding. Even if, you know, she fails flat for a couple of weeks, even sometimes a couple of months, she's trying. And this is what it looks like when you actually put in the effort. So I wanted to watch her just kind of as a comparison between our girls, uh, particularly with Anna from Glitter and Lasers and uh, Amber in particular. I just kind of wanted to compare her to the two of them, whether she wishes to be compared to them or not. It's another story. Uh, if you are also someone who watches Beatrice, don't go talk to her about me in the videos and the, doing the comparison thing. I don't think she would appreciate it, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think that makes me a horrible person, but anyway, onward. You guys let me know down in the comments. Good morning. I kind of figured because I am kind of refreshing a lot of things in January, that January will be the month of refresh. Yay. What really needs to be refreshed is <laughs> just a lot of organization, cleaning things. So I figured that's what we will chill out and do in this video, starting with the wreck that is my car. I'm just. I like her car, actually. I want a nice car, like, m nice and big like this. Sitting out of Elmo, a.k.a. Wedgman, a.k.a. my mom's house right now, because she's going to be coming along with me. But another thing that Excuse I'm going to be working on is my anxiety. And I had mentioned in a previous video that I have anxiety going through a car wash because I don't like to be trapped. <laughs> and car washes kind of trap you in a space for a set amount of time like granted it's it's minutes but they trap you in a space for a set amount of time and there's like all of this stuff going on like big machinery and it freaks me the f out honestly i like car washes i think they're fun i don't have a problem with them uh i clearly am not like i know there are people that do people like seem with car washes they're either completely unbothered by them they love them or they hate them. That seems to be like the mode. And I realize that covers pretty much everyone on the planet. But um, this does go back to uh, Beatrice has talked about her anxiety a lot. Like that's been one of her number one things that she's been working on over the years that I've been watching her. And I know that there was like a year, maybe it was a year and a half there where her anxiety got really, really bad. And she was just having anxiety attacks, leaving the house kind of a thing. And she couldn't really figure it out and so she she tried a bunch of different stuff and i think she's mostly gotten it under control but i can understand like i think claustrophobia is perhaps the thing that's actually going on here that's causing the anxiety but i can't diagnose so i'm, I'm not even close to being somebody like that however i think it's interesting that she says my anxiety is i don't like car washes and she's like i know they're benign but they still cause me anxiety so what are we doing? We're taking our mother, obviously, because that's who you take. <laughs> we're taking our mother and we're going to a car wash because my car is filthy and it needs to be cleaned. As opposed to giving up completely and totally like someone else we know. Honestly. So I figured first step would be going through it with somebody and then eventually getting the balls to go through it myself. I know this is so stupid. It's not stupid. I mean, I don't, I don't care if you guys think it's stupid or not. This is the process to getting better. This is the step. These are the steps 
that Amber never does. Amber goes, there's something wrong with me. And instead of being like, I'm going to go fix it, Amber just goes, there's something wrong with me. So I'm going to wallow in it. Wah! And you can't say anything because there's something wrong with me. Woo! Like, I know she gets criticized for stuff. She mentions the comments that she gets. And I'm sure if I flip through the comments section, I will see things. But this is this is how you do it. You take little baby steps until you feel comfortable. And then once you feel comfortable, usually you're good. But, but it's like, what can you do? So yeah, clean the car first. Then we will move on to the house, which has a facade of being somewhat clean some of the time. But when you start opening up cabinets and closets, you get to the nitty gritty of the clutter. Just There's a reason why you all can't see my background. There's a reason why you're staring at a white window impossible to find stuff all of the time so i figure it's time to give my space a little bit of a zhuzhing anyway and not to mention i'm kind of ahead of myself season wise like i was with christmas having put up a christmas tree in october I'm which by the way is a sin against man and god do not do it october has one season and that is spooky I'm also chomping at the bit to get to springtime because I'm like, I'm sick of this cold ass weather. I am wanting to start a garden. I'm wanting to do all of these things, but it's still really cold outside. So I figure spring cleaning in January might be okay. I will say this much about this particular car wash that she's taking us through. I feel like the flashing lights would give me some anxiety just because like, I don't do great with pulsing lights like that i'm not particularly like afraid of them or anything it's just like uh, overstimulating i think is the word i'm looking for so i feel like of the car washes that she could have gone through i don't know what her options were i just feel like this one with the flashing lights probably was not helpful <laughs> God, i get so claustrophobic at this part I actually think that's kind of soothing. See the flashing light, like the way the light's turning, just leave it steady. Use the car wash. We're not gonna talk about what the backseat of my car looks like. And random paintbrush, all right. I have got to find someone that I can pay to detail my car. It is beyond my ability to clean, I think. It is, it's got like nooks and crannies and stuff. And I'm just like, how do I do this? My mom was asking me if I was embarrassed showing my dirty car on the internet for all to see. And I was like, do I look like I have a pristine car? No, it's not who I want to be, but it is who I am on a cellular level. Just a person whose car looks lived in. It's to be fair, of the things she has shown us about herself on the internet, I think the car is the least of her, <laughs> the least of the sins. Just my aesthetic. Anyways, I think next item on the agenda is to get into that pantry and give it a good organization because it got out of whack really fast. But speaking of the pantry, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. Okay, so my cleaning style is to take everything out of the place that I'm cleaning and make some other area a god awful mess and then slowly put it back. So then I can't, I have to like force myself to keep going. I can't just like stop halfway through, you know? I, I prefer the Tetris method where you basically just keep moving things around until eventually everything's where it's supposed to be. I, I'm a puzzle box person. That, that That's my cleaning method. It has to be like really vast for me to not want to do that. There have been situations where I've just taken everything out and put everything back, but uh, I'm frankly too lazy for that shit. You know what I mean? So. As you can tell by this shelf, the bins work as far as organization, but then like they get overcrowded and I just kind of shove stuff on top and to the side. So that's not helping anyone. It's just causing a potential avalanche situation. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what the name of this piece of music is, but I fucking love it. I, mm, when I do things, I don't necessarily always go this extra step. And maybe that's the benefit to taking everything out and then putting everything back in is you can actually do this part. When I reorganize my desk, I do this. 
You all care deeply about my cleaning skills. I've been thinking about getting some bins like this for my pantry because my pantry's kind of deep. Also, my partner is the exact antithesis of organized, if you catch my drift. And I just wonder if like the bins might help because then I could label them and labeling does seem to assist. It's not a, it's not perfect. Ah, oh, that's going to be heavy. This is bonito flakes. My pantry is not this well stocked. I will not lie. I'm not allowed to have grapefruit anymore. And I miss it. <laughs> and an apple. The fridge is next. I've been putting this off for quite a while. Yesterday I dropped an egg. Like somehow off the back of the top shelf and it cracked. It just ran all the way down the back of the fridge. <laughs> Also, I realized like there's some leftovers that just somehow got pushed to the back that have been there for longer than they needed to be. I've recently been doing pretty good at eating leftovers. This is why I'm glad I have a garbage disposal because I, I just, as long as it doesn't have bones or something like really hard in it, it just goes straight down the garbage disposal. I don't even try. But sometimes things just... So I will say when I used to garden, I would put, I mean, unless it had like meat products in it, I would put that kind of stuff in the, um, uh, what do you call that? The decomposition pile. I mean, that's what it's doing, but I don't think that's the name of it. Anyway, that's where that used to go. And I do kind of miss being able to do that, but I would rather my kitchen not stink. Get away from you. And there's something back there that I saw. <laughs> That's been back there for maybe like three weeks since I made it. So not good, not good. Reminds me of that Weird Al song. Living in the fridge. It's just a mishmash of chaos. I want a refrigerator this big. I'm not gonna lie, I really do. Mine is so tiny, which is also why my pantry is not that well stocked. I just don't have a lot of space. I'm in a very small apartment. Eats it precious. For being three weeks old, it doesn't look terrible. But this was a 2023 thing. Granted, that was only like two weeks ago at this point, but still. <laughs> still. What in tarnation? I have one of those. I think, I think it's duck stock. We had duck for holidays, and so I saved the frames and boiled them down. I think it's a thawed baggie of duck stock. I'm afraid to open it and find out. egg. Also, can we just appreciate that Beatrice knows how to edit videos as opposed to Amber? There's there's music, there's cutscenes, there's... she'll do some transitions here in a second. I mean, can we just appreciate that she actually knows how to like do her freaking job as opposed to someone else we know? Okay, let's keep this cleaning train rolling because we're making our way downtown, walking fast, faces past, and we're homebound. Just kidding, we're making our way to the bedroom. Um, let's play a game real fast. <laughs> Which side of the bed do you think is mine? My partner and I have separate blankets, so you know which side of the bed's mine. <laughs> because when I make the bed, I fold the blankets in half. So it so half of the bed is his blanket and half of the bed is my blanket. So that's how you know whose side of the bed is what. If you guessed the one with the angry bee stuffy, you'd be correct. This is actually a potato in a bee costume, is what this is supposed to be. Should we procrastinate our responsibilities and have a little show and tell real Yes. Also, I don't get smush. Are, is that what they're called? Smashmallows or something? I didn't get beanie babies either. Fast. Because why not? Oh, if you're wondering what the hell that is, that's a screen for the projector that we rigged up over the bed. I had one of those, only we used the ceiling. 
Uh, the projector doesn't work so much anymore, but we used to watch uh, movies and stuff on the ceiling. Because it's fun, that's why. It doesn't look pretty, but it's kind of awesome. What to show and tell. We got this little planet thing that hovers. Honestly iconic and whole vibe. And it lights up. Got the whole blue. My partner won't let me put glow in the dark star stickers on the ceiling in the bedroom. Makes me very sad. Me squad. Muffin included. Very rare. Muffin's kind of like the best character, I think, in my opinion. Baby Yoda, we got you. Then in the drawer, you'll never guess, but we have... Toys. A dismembered Winnie the Pooh body, which was a Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal crochet project that I took on for my sister for Christmas, but I had to ask for an extension on that one because... This is why I don't make handmade gifts anymore for Christmas. I have a sweater. I have a knitting project that I was going to make for my aunt like four years ago now. I don't even know what the pattern was anymore. As <laughs> The pattern is very confusing. Ready? Listen to this. Mind you, this is one, one round. Joining round, single crochet in next 42 single crochets, two single crochet in next single crochet, holding first leg and body with right sides together, matching marked single crochet on first leg with next single crochet on body. And working through both thicknesses. Single crochet in next 11 single crochets, leave remaining 16 single crochets on first leg unworked. Working in single crochet on body decrease, two single crochets in next single crochet, single crochet in next 12 single crochets, two single crochet in next single crochet decrease, holding second leg and body with right sides together, matching marked single crochet on second leg with next single crochet on body, working through both thicknesses. Single crochet in next 11 single crochets, leave remaining 16 single crochets on second leg unworked. Working in single crochet on bodies, two single crochets in next single crochet. Single crochet in next 15 single crochets for a total of 101 single crochets. I don't crochet. I've tried, and it is apparently beyond me. You e I've noticed with people, you either crochet or you knit. You don't do both. I knit, ergo I do not crochet. I don't, I don't know why that is. My aunt crochets. She does beautiful work too, uh, but doesn't knit. It's very strange. I don't understand it. I'm sure, I'm sure there are people who do both. Like, it's not that hard. It's just like, I, there's something about shifting the brain from knitting to crochet. And I'm not saying a knitting pattern can't be that complicated. I'm just saying that sounded like a lot. That was just round 16. Like that was just one time around. That was one, it's horrible. And that's as much as I got on this. To be fair, that looked pretty good. Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal. At this point in time, I don't know if I'll ever get done. Uh, but speaking of projects that I did and did not show you, this thing, which, which is a plethora of tiny wooden cubes this. that I painted individually and then stuck to this canvas using Elmer's glue. I eyeballed the space. I remember her putting this one together. I don't, I don't remember her like putting it together, but I remember her um, buying the pieces and the paints. And I remember her putting the dots on this, uh, on this canvas. And I remember her predicting this exact issue coming up. Pieces in between the squares, um, instead of measuring them out because <laughs> you've seen my car, you know, you know why I didn't measure them out. But now I just lay in bed and it haunts me because I see all of the parts where they're not evenly spaced. So I'm thinking about redoing it, but uh, there's that. See, I think you should just lean into the imperfections of that because that's what makes the piece like more interesting than just a bunch of pieces of wood glued to a, to a canvas. Like the, the imperfections of the spacing are what make the piece unique. I'm not an art person. But I think we've procrastinated enough because that crochet pattern probably took me like 30 minutes to read that one step. So <laughs> now on to the closet. Yay. I like the wood in her closet. I also like the fact that there's space in her closet. My closet is one of those little carved out slidey door doodads where there's barely enough room to fit a pair of shoes. This was all what was hiding behind my hanged clothes, so. Oh dear. That shoe rack too. I don't own that many shoes, but something like that would be very convenient. Oh, I like those. I have those exact shoes, the red all-stars, only mine are bright yellow and they have like teal laces in them and I fucking love them. I actually 
actually feel like now is like a part to stop a minute at and just kind of do another comparison thing between B and mostly Amber, who does all of the organizational. Like Amber used to do a lot of these like or organize with me or clean the whatever with me kind of situations. And the the that part of it's not really so much the part that I really wanted to do the comparison with, so I don't know why I brought it up. But you know, Beatrice sat us down and did a room tour, right? And compare that to when the very few times Amber's ever done a, a room tour with us. Amber says, this is a thing I bought. This is another thing I bought. This is another thing I bought. Amber is showing us the personality she wishes she projected. And it changes from girlfriend to girlfriend. Um, but the last time I can remember her doing it is she did like an office tour. And she showed the office, the shared office her and wifey had at the time. And everything in there was something mass produced. Everything in there was something she had purchased, she had mass produced. There was no story behind any of these items. They were very impersonal. They had no real value to them because they were impersonal kind of a situation. With maybe the exception of like the record player, but... The record player and the records weren't Amber's, they were wifey's. So the story behind all of that was not something that Amber could tell us because they weren't her things. Um, Beatrice gives us her procrastination tour of her bedroom before she starts to clean it. And, you know, she talks about her smash mellows, which I don't know what those are, but they're, I know they're a thing that people collect. And then she talks about the bluey which is, I know it's a kid's show. I've seen it at Wagman's a few times when I go shopping and they have it in the eating area for the kids. It's right next to the bathrooms. Um, so I know what it is. I just don't know a whole lot about it. But it clearly is something of, of value to her, like something that she likes. I mean, I've got Scooby-Doo shit, so I get it. I, I get that part. And you will take Scooby-Doo from my cold, dead hands. So there you have that. But then she shows us the... Um, the Winnie the Pooh pattern that she was working on. And there's a story behind it. It's not just, oh, look at this thing. It's, hey, there's this thing. And this is why this thing looks this way. And, oh, here's the struggle I'm having while, while I am having while I am making the thing. And this is why the thing exists. I'm making it for my sister and yada, yada, yada. There's a story behind the object, which makes the object more than just a pile of yarn that has been woven together you know it makes it personal it makes it interesting whether you like crochet or not and i mean i could have gone without having the pattern read to me but the point was still made and then she moves on to the um, art piece which for me for me is even more important because i remember her collecting the pieces for the art piece i never and she never finished it and so clearly she has but on top of that having a story that she shared with us and again it's something that she is making and she made for a purpose and she even was able to show us little video clips of it from when she very first started that project i think that was like two years ago um now those of us who have been following her long enough now we finally get to see the finished project and so on top of it, having a story that makes it personal, that makes it interesting. It's also, if you're a longtime fan, you know, it's even more interesting because you remember it and it's a walk down memory lane and it's a way of connecting with your audience in a positive kind of way. Whether she intended that to be the result there or not, it is her way of it, it it is a successful way of the creator connecting with the audience because those of us who have followed for a long time get to see the fruition of this project that remember that we remember her starting those of us who are new get to see actual pieces of her personality like someone as milk toast as amber does not make a canvas with teeny tiny glued squares that they have hand painted onto that canvas amber would never do that it would never occur to amber to do that the crochet it would never occur to amber to crochet something together and more specifically to crochet a project that will end up being a present for someone else 
to make a gift for someone else. That would never occur to Amber. Amber would never hand make something for someone else. Would she build a Lego and give it away? Sure. And as much as I love Legos, it's not the same thing. Okay. Because again, it's a personalized gift. There's a reason she picked a Winnie the Pooh. I don't know what it is. I'm going to assume it's because her sister likes Winnie the Pooh. But again, there's a purpose behind that object existing. And the fact that she stopped, I mean, yes, she's procrastinating by giving us this room tour kind of a thing, but she's showing us pieces of her personality and she's not defensive about it. And she's not um, flexing, I guess is my point. Maybe with the bluey character that is rare, but even then it's kind of one of those things like this is a really rare piece like i'm the idiot that went and bought this thing you know it was it's relatable because it's like oh it's a really rare piece if you give it crap kind of a thing and uh, clearly she does i don't know what it is i wouldn't be that excited about it but i'm excited for her because it also this whole thing also allows us to kind of connect with her us the audience connect with beatrice on more than just a oh hey it's a chick on the internet kind of level which is kind of really all the deeper you can connect with amber even with all of her q and a's there's nothing more than the surface to connect with with amber because she doesn't allow us to same thing with anna anna is very hard to connect with on a viewer level like it's very hard to i'm not i'm not trying to be like too callous but it's very hard to care about anna on like a personal level because anna doesn't give us any reason to she doesn't show us her personality on this level she doesn't connect with her audience like as where amber over connects with her audience anna under connects with her audience and so it causes the same problem um beatrice is being real she's being authentic she's expressing herself She's sharing the mess that is her closet. She shared the mess that is her the back of her car. Whereas Anna would never do that because it would show us how imperfect Anna is. Kind of a situation type deal. Um, but anyway, let's finish watching this because it's actually rather satisfying. Also, I want some coffee. Why is there 360 pieces of clear cutlery in the closet? I don't know. I have paper plates and plastic cutlery. I have never used paper plates or plastic cutlery in, I would say, at least the last five to six years. Why do I own them at all? Where did they come from? I don't know. Closet. <laughs> I wish my closet was this big, to be perfectly frank. My system for the closet is to go from like least clothes to most clothes. So we got like crop tops over here and then like winter jackets over there. So I don't own this much clothing. And I kind of do that on purpose. I feel like if I if I had a closet this big, I feel like I would own this much clothing just because like you know how you just kind of fill space kind of a thing? Oh, I got space for that. Uh, I don't have space for that much clothing. So, like, my wardrobe's very limited. It's not like a capsule closet, like those, what I call capsule closet things, where you have, like, five pieces of clothing and you make all of your outfits out of it. Eh, we don't do that bullshit, but I have way less clothes than that. Also, I really want this sweater. Just, just send it to me. Just mail it right to my house. I could like flip through and find what I'm looking for. Ooh, ah, I still want that shoe rack. Hey, it's that doll. I, I don't even have a cabinet like this for all of my bathroom stuff. That's how small my apartment is. It's not New York City small, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, I don't live in a closet. I have closets. I don't live in one.
Okay, I think that that is enough cleaning for one day, personally. It probably is like five minutes of footage, but it took me all day. But I think if I just pick like a random cubby or crevasse a day and organize that cubby or crevasse, then eventually this house is gonna start making sense. Cause I don't know y'all. Will it though? Will it? Or, or follow me on this one. You get one side of the house organized and you keep working your way to the other side of the house. But by the time you make it to the other side of the house, the side you started on is now disorganized again. That sounds more like what's actually going to happen because that's what happens to me. Oh, like we're screwed over here because I got the ADHD. Stevie, I'm pretty sure, got the undiagnosed ADHD because he is exactly like me. <laughs> Except for he's a little bit more organized. He's not as chaotic as I am. I'm the one who makes the messes, you know? See, this, this is like the exact opposite between my partner and I. Like, I'm the one that goes through and, like, organizes things to a point where it probably is over-organized. And my partner's like, what? I shit in the drawer! And it drives me absolutely crazy. And I know my organizing drives him crazy, too. So it's kind of like... It's kind of like we're, like, making each other crazy. <laughs> so what happens when you live with people? Know what I mean? But girl, I found eight tubes of toothpaste in the cabinet and we just keep buying more because we think we're out of it, but it's more like a out of sight, out of mind thing. There is eight unopened tubes of toothpaste in the bathroom cabinet. Been there. Now granted, I love having a little hoard going because like, you know how like they say like people in the 20s have like that great depression mindset where they're like burying money in the backyard and stuff. <sighs> we got that 2020 mindset. Okay. Okay. First off, my grandmother, I don't, my, my grandmother who passed away at like the age of like almost 100, I think she was 97, something like that. Maybe she was 98. I don't remember. Anyway, she, she had money hidden in the house, her house somewhere. And it was one of those weird situations where you would go over and you, for whatever reason, you could ask her for money. I mean, whatever, you know, people, money, whatever. I don't know what your relationship is with money in your family. But if you ask grandma for money, she would go upstairs and vanish for like five, ten minutes, and then she would come back down with cash. And I remember one time my um my uncle asked for like three hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, and she just came back down with like three hundred dollars in twenties. I was just like not that I want to know exactly where it is. It's just like, why do you have that much money in your house? Because it's like that wasn't all of it, is my kind of my point. So, yeah, that's very much a, a like, a, uh -huh, a depressionite thing. Like, they really did have, like, these weird squirreled away pockets of money in their houses. And it's just, it's mildly terrifying to think about. Thankfully, they never got robbed or anything. Okay, where there was a time when there was a panic over toilet paper. <laughs> Which is so bizarre now that I think back to it, but it's not Okay, look, with the toilet paper thing. I'm on the train coming home from San Antonio because everything started to lock down while I was still visiting my aunt and my uncle in San Antonio. And so my mom and I are riding the last train out of Texas. I shit you not. And we're trying desperately to get home before everything gets locked down. And on the way home, we start hearing about toilet paper shortages. And all I remember is I went, oh, hell no. And I got on Amazon and I was like, we are buying a bidet. And I did. I ordered a bidet that day on the train as we're going home. I told my partner this too. I did all of this without my partner's knowledge. I think it was my partner that told me about the, the, like, the toilet paper shortage thing. And so I bought the bidet. And I told my partner the bidet was coming. And I said, don't judge me. And I said, we've got some old towels. I'll just cut them up into pieces. And we're set. We use toilet paper, don't get me wrong. But if you haven't invested in a bidet, you really should. The other step, probably a step too far. But when no one else had toilet paper, I had no problems. Just putting it out there. It's nice having a year's supply of toothpaste. Maybe. I don't know. Granted, it's not from like a stockpiling standpoint. It's more of a like, I did not know that I had already had some before purchasing more. kind of. This is me and mustard. I probably have like three unopened bottles of mustard hanging out in my pantry, plus one in the fridge. I don't know why. We don't even eat that much mustard. The thing, so. 
Uh, anyways, I just want to thank you so much for being like a positive pressure, even though unbeknownst to you, I don't even know if you'll watch this video, but a positive pressure for me to be productive because sometimes that's what I need, especially when it comes to cleaning. So I just want to thank you so much and I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye! And remember, Bye. if you're interested... All right, wait, okay. All right, let's talk about... Let's talk about the differences here. Uh, especially that outro that she has where she says, um, thank you all for being a positive influence even though you may never watch this video. That is the difference between... Um, a parasocial relationship with your audience like via Amber versus a I would think a somewhat healthy relationship between a creator and their audience again I am I love each one of you individually and special you are all individual butterflies and snowflakes in my mind but some people might view their audience as being just a group of faceless individuals who exist somewhere in the vast tubes and wires that are the internet. I'm not saying I'm one of those people because clearly I am not. But um, my point is Beatrice uses the camera and thereby the audience. Because again, the camera is um the camera is the eye of the audience. The camera not only works as the influencer's window to the outside world it also works as the audience's eye on the creator and as creepy as it sounds beatrice knows how to use that toward it is beatrice knows how to use that to her advantage so she knows if she's being watched even though this isn't live she has the ability to edit any of this that she wants but she uses the pressure of being watched by the audience which is represented by the camera to motivate her to do things uh it motivates her to work out she's mentioned in past videos this time she's using it to motivate her to clean show so she's using the audience if you will to motivate her to do things that she wants to do so she's using it as a positive kind of pressure she also just because i've watched her forever i know that she uses that as a form of accountability as well like with her um, 30 days of no sugar, she's making those into shorts for the most part, but they the clips do come out of the major, out of the videos like this. So that's her way. She says, I'm going to do a 30 day sugar cleanse. I'm not going to have any added sugar. Like she went the whole nine yards. Like she's been making everything from scratch so that she knows there's no sugar in it kind of a thing. But she's using those shorts as a way to keep herself accountable it's not as a way to flex on the audience um it's kind of the same way that i was using the shorts as a way to um keep me on the weight watchers thing that i did way back when i started the channel restarted the channel honestly if i hadn't had that accountability between myself and you all the audience i probably would not have made all two weeks of that because i hated it it wasn't fun i did not benefit from it whatsoever so like having that invisible accountability buddy via the camera held me accountable and she does the same thing and these are i mean other people do it it's not like it's just beatrice but when I see other creators do this, I see that it's kind of more of a positive way of not only interacting with your audience, because your audience is now participating in whatever the hell it is you're doing, because whether they know it or not, they're your accountability buddies. Like they're the ones holding you accountable. They're the ones watching. They're the ones motivating, whether they're sending you messages or not. Like, yeah, you go girl or no, this is stupid, you know, kind of a thing. Amber uses her audience in a way that, like, if things don't work out for Amber, she blames the audience. If things don't go the way she wants, she blames the audience. If she fails at something, it's the audience's fault. Her parasocial relationship with her audience is the kind of relationship you would have with, like, a distant friend kind of a situation she uses her audience as her therapist she uses them as her confidant like she tells her audience secrets and then later on it's like you guys don't know anything about me except everything that you tell us kind of a situation 
uh beatrice is very open with her audience but i think she knows where to stop when it comes to that openness kind of a situation maybe when she's filming she does overshare but she certainly cuts it out before she puts the video together kind of a situation um i don't know i i wonder if i can say the word situation like nine more times before i'm done with this video challenge anyway um I really don't have anything else to say about the video itself. Again, I like her, so my overall take on her is relatively positive. I also think she's an excellent counterexample to Amber and Anna. And when Beatrice talks more about her exercise and her workout routines, because she also uses um, Copilot for the most part. And in the video before this one, which is the one I reacted to and the mic didn't work, um, she goes through a couple of her workouts and, so, and I made comments about the differences between Beatrice's level of competence with her workouts and her exercises versus um, Anna. And the difference really is that Beatrice's movements are very fluid. Their, her form is mostly correct, if not completely correct. Uh, she doesn't just whip the weights around and does things as fast as humanly possible like Anna does. Anna Anna works out like she wants to get done. And in the process, she doesn't care if her form's good. She doesn't care if the weights are too heavy. She doesn't care if the weights are too too light. She doesn't, she doesn't care. She just wants to get done as fast as possible. Beatrice works out in the way that you're supposed to work out where you're, I guess it's called the mind muscle connection, where you're supposed to be aware of the movement and how your muscles are working to, to do the movement and get the most and the, the fullest benefit out of the movement. I don't know. I'm not pretending like I know all this crap. I'm just repeating things that I've been told. So that's an interesting, uh, contrast there for me between Beatrice use Beatrice and her success with Copilot because she does attribute Copilot with a lot of her um, success with workouts and Anna's success with Copilot. Beatrice has also mentioned in the past that she's asked her coach to critique her form and to correct her form. And Beatrice has also mentioned that she has had actual people correct her form in the past. So there again i think is another major difference beatrice is concerned about her form and doing things correctly and getting the benefit of doing it correctly and not injuring herself anna just wants to show off anna wants to pretend like she is a health queen and that she can do anything at 500 whatever pounds that anyone else can do I would wager if you put Beatrice and Anna together and had them compete against each other, like Beatrice would blow Anna out of the water. And Beatrice is still relatively heavy. I think she's still over 200 pounds. I think she's close to 300. I'm not positive she hasn't weighed in, but she is promising us a weigh in soon. So not that it matters, but it does, but it doesn't kind of a thing. I still don't know exactly how much Anna weighs and I probably never will. So, because Anna will not share that information with us. Again, not being transparent or honest with her audience. And I only care about Anna's weight because she's trying to sell herself as this, like, fitness guru, girly. Otherwise, I don't care. It doesn't matter. And honestly, whatever her weight ends up being, I don't actually care. I just care that she's being transparent. All right. Anyway, I think that's enough one-to-one. -one. Um, if you've made it this far... I don't know. Leave your favorite cleaning item down in the emoji section. I, I don't know. I'm, there's got to be a broom, right? There's definitely a broom. So go ahead and leave your favorite cleaning device down in the comments section as your emoji. Let me know what you guys think about, well, do you guys even like doing a comparison thing like this? Does it, does it do anything for you? Do you enjoy it? Um, because I can continue to do this. I, I'm going to watch Beatrice one way or the other. So I can either watch it with you guys or I can watch it by myself. But if you guys enjoy me doing this kind of thing and enjoy me doing the comparison back and forth between Beatrice and our other girls, let me know. We can do some more of it. And yeah, I will see everybody in the next one. Bye.